Hey, Randall Carlson. Hello, Brad Young. Hey, man. Yeah, we're getting together for the Cosmic Summit 2023 weekend here. And you're going to be doing some discussions about the Younger Dryas and the Torrids and uh, the Comet Research Group research and how that can uh, tie in with the bigger picture of the catastrophe uh, that we talk about in the mega flood. So we're prepared to announce a live stream on June 30th, which is asteroid day now for at least the last 10 years. So if you could let everybody know what's, what's critical to be aware about uh, the importance of June 30th, when, what that's the anniversary of. Well, a asteroid day, yes, as you said, Brad, asteroid day is something now that's been observed by those who are familiar, mostly going to be in the astronomical realm or planetary geology, but more and more it's becoming part of the uh, the general vernacular that people are aware of certain things. And June 30th is designated as asteroid day. And the reason for that is that 115 years ago, on June 30th, uh, at about 7.30 in the morning, 7.45 in the morning, right in there, just as the sun is coming up over Siberia, there was a tremendous event that happened, one of the most extraordinary events uh, of recent history. There was a an object that came into the atmosphere and plunged towards the Earth and moving at a high rate of speed. It was witnessed by a lot of people. When it got about five miles above the surface of the Earth, and it, it was moving so fast that the air, the atmosphere in front of it just didn't have time to get out of the way in essence. And it piled up and formed a, a, an impenetrable barricade. And the object just slammed into that dense wall of atmosphere and essentially exploded by turning inside out. And then a gigantic blast went out in every direction, 360 degrees. The blast wave of this object also went down and struck the earth. And as the pressure of this blast wave hit the earth and moved, spread out laterally, it knocked down about 80 million old growth trees that, that uh, formed the Taiga forest that was in this region where this event happened. It has come to be known as the Tunguska cosmic event. And it occurred in a region of Siberia that's just somewhat to the northwest of Lake Baikal in a very interesting uh, location on the Earth. So we're going to talk about that on Asteroid Day. We'll get into that a little bit in the Cosmic Summit because it is such a, uh, a relevant part of uh, uncovering this whole mystery of what has happened to this planet in the past. Um, but then we're going to we won't have time to really take a deep dive into that specifically so we're going to do a special live stream on June 30th uh, where we're going to kind of get into some of the, the the details, the lesser known details about that event and and try to convey how extraordinary it really was and why we need to remember it and what lessons it has for us today and into our future because it was very much a cosmic teaching event. And we're still trying to figure out all of the, the the meaning and the mysteries of it. We don't have it fully explained yet, but we've come certainly a long way. And we've had access to a lot more information with the, the ending of the Cold War, uh, when uh, the Russia opened up a lot of its archives and so forth. Hopefully that's not going to get all shut down again because of the, you know, what's, what's going on in the world today and the conflict that's going on essentially between Russia and the U.S. But in any case, we've got a lot of new knowledge that I don't think has been processed yet fully and integrated into our models of ancient history, planetary history, the history of civilization on this planet. But this has tremendously important things to teach us. I'm going to give a little example here of how uh, I've got here a, a quote from an eyewitness uh, who, who experienced this event firsthand way back in 1908 it happened in 1908 june 30th um and describing their experience which is very similar to a lot of the other eyewitness accounts of this and then i'm going to refer back to the book of acts out of the bible just as an example i could have pulled many many examples but i'm going to what i i think you'll see the point of 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 why i'm 
uh, setting up these this this quote from uh, 1908, along with a book out of the Bible. And a lot of people over the years, as I'm stressing the importance of understanding these kinds of cosmic phenomena, the role of asteroids and comets, uh, and the impacts of these, the encounters between Earth and these objects in the history of this planet, in the history of civilization, one of the the, the, the sort of objections or almost criticisms I've got, well, if it's as important as you say it is to the ancient peoples and to the ancient history, because I've always made the point, you know, look, when we we, we look at the, the 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 ancient cultural artifacts around the the earth, the temples, the sacred structures, the layout of of the the hinges and the the enclosures and all of this, we find over and over and over again a universal almost obsession with astronomy, with the sky, with things that are happening in the sky. I would cite that as the first line of evidence. But the second is, yes, there is a record. There is a record, but it's come down to us in a form that we didn't readily recognize, because if we're looking for echoes of our own scientific explanation or documentation of an event for modern eyewitnesses, we might miss the fact that so many of the traditions that have come down to us uh, are expressed in the terms of mythology and legends and folklore and in in the vernacular of those times. So first I will go back and forth here a little bit here so you can just see the, the comparison. Now this is from a Kozemsk, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a village uh, near where the explosion, the atmospheric explosion occurred. It's dated the 17th, but you have to bear in mind that they were using a different calendar in Siberia back in the early 20th century, which co coincided to our modern date of June 30th. So this is what it says. Let me interject Absolutely. there, Randall, just before you get going with that, to, to be clear, there is uh, a stream beyond Jupiter around the sun where this uh, torrid stream cycles around, right? And, it, and we have a visible uh, time twice a year. Twice a year. But, but the June 30th version, it is coming around the sun and it's basically blinded to us. We can't really see or and or it looks like it's coming directly from the sun. So that's very yes. different from the Halloween torrids, where it's, uh, you know, can be a beautiful nighttime display. But in the middle yes. of summer, we don't see it. That's right. And, and so and some so some of these accounts uh you know talk about that where it looks like it's coming from the sun yes and we will get into it we'll, we'll have the graphics and we'll, we'll be showing that so people can understand this process very clear and i hadn't mentioned that but you brought up an important point it's almost certain based on the timing and the position of the radiant and we're going to explain all of this at the in this uh the the, the that's the purpose of the june 30th to kind of put the the relevant information into a concise form uh, that people can take and listen to a few times and really try to get an a, a, a understanding of these processes in their mind. But what you said is important. That object, the Tunguska object, the cosmic object, was almost certainly part of a much larger system called the Torrid Meteor Stream. And we're going to get into that. And it's fascinating, almost beyond belief, particularly when you understand that uh, how the whole the, the whole mechanism works. So we're going to explain that. We're going to show graphics, slides, and so on, so people can understand the connection, say, between the Torrid meteor stream, Tunguska, and ancient legends and traditions that have come down to us. So on that, let me let me do this here. We're back to the 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 eyewitness account. This actually appeared in a uh, a newspaper, Kras Krasnoyarets. I'm probably totally butchering that pronunciation, but this occurred uh, July 13th, 1908. So this is somewhat after the event. They've gone out and they've collected these eyewitness accounts. That's where this comes from. So an extraordinary atmospheric phenomena was noticed in this region. At 7.43 a.m., a noise as a strong wind was heard, followed immediately by a fearful crash accompanied by a subterranean shock, which caused buildings to tremble. Okay, an extraordinary atmospheric was noticed in the region, and it was had a noise as of a strong wind. And then there was a fearful crash, and the building shook, right? And there was a subterranean roar. Now we'll go to the second chapter of the book of Acts, verses 2 through 4. Here's, and suddenly 
there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now listen as I go on here. I'm back to the to the eyewitness account. So it was followed immediately. There was a noise as of a strong wind. And it was heard, followed immediately by a fearful crash accompanied by a subterranean shock which caused buildings to tremble. One had the impression that some huge beam or a heavy stone had possibly struck the building. This was followed by two further equally forceful blows. The interval between the first and the third blows was accompanied by an extraordinary underground roar like the sound of a number of trains passing simultaneously over rails. And then, for five or six minutes, followed by a sound like artillery fire, between 50 and 60 bangs gradually becoming fainter while the ground trembled. And then it goes on to say, as eyewitnesses relate, before the first bangs were heard, a heavenly body of a fiery appearance cut across the sky from south to north. Neither its size nor shape could be made out owing to its speed and particularly its unexpectedness. However, many people in different villages distinctly saw that when the flying object touched the horizon, a huge flame shot up that cut the sky in two. I go back to Acts second chapter. And there appeared unto them cloven, cloven, the past participle of cleave, right? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And then when this was noised abroad, the multiple came together and were confounded, as were the villagers who witnessed this, rushing forth from their homes and were confounded with what was happening in the heavens above them and in the earth below their feet. Do we see the parallels here? That's a totally parallel. Yeah. So this is what my point is that, yes, the ancient record of cosmic events is embedded in all of these traditions that have come down to us. These are the kinds of things we're going to explore. And it's really probably only going to be the first, uh, first opening act in this exploration because in my opinion, understanding the cosmic environment of which we are inextricably a part is the most important thing that we as the human species on this planet need to understand. Right, and that's going to be part uh, leading up to we're going to do a tour of uh, Middle Cumberland in Tennessee uh, expanding over Halloween weekend, which is the fall transit of the torrids yeah so we'll get another episode of this story during that tour uh and and that'll be available soon if people want to go out into tennessee with us and be out for halloween yes costumes required uh we'll be having some fun there uh what is it uh october 29th through november 3rd for our next Middle Cumberland tour over Halloween. But yeah, Randall will get more into these torrid events at that point. But oh, yeah, to, to link that into the, the biblical phrases and uh, chapters, I, I remember reading those things uh, long ago and linking that myself. It's like, well, this sounds like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some sort of cosmic bombardment. Sure. And, and now we have the, the visuals to, to, to link those and uh, make make sense of what they were talking about long ago. Absolutely. Yep. So I would invite people to join us. There will be a nice mix of old information and new information. And for those of you that have been regularly following this and beginning to, to really begin to understand these concepts and, and the details and so forth, you'll get a refresher course and you'll get a whole new dimensional framework for understanding uh, beyond what we've covered so far. 
And I'll reiterate again, this important kind of knowledge, it's the kind of thing where you, you know, you have to kind of really go over it and over it again, like they did in the classical traditions of learning, which required being able to absorb a great deal of information and knowledge and have that at your fingertips. Have the, and, and, and we're trying to get away a little bit, trying to recover some of that, that archaic tradition where there was really a, a level of mental development and, and memory cultiv cultivation um, that's so important to, to developing the whole mind. Yeah, there's there's no substitute for repetition for actually being able to learn something that you That's previously right. had no awareness of. You've got to hear it again and multiple times for it really to make sense. And yes. the visuals that you're going to offer uh, help exponentially to seat that in the mind and you know get the get the picture of what's been a reality on this planet and, and for our ancestors in the past and what we may be uh, up against in the future and how do we deal with these things what we may be up against in the future exactly so yeah uh please we're gonna have some fun it's gonna be stimulating uh june 30th we're gonna have uh we're gonna go down this road a little further than we've gone before we'll we'll uh we'll recover some of the ground we've already covered but then on uh, using that as our foundation, we'll go a little bit further. All right. Excellent. Well, we hope to see you all on Asteroid Day. Keep up with Randall Carlson uh, on his website, randallcarlson.com. And the best way to get all this information about the tours and ongoing events, randallcarlson.com slash newsletter. Hope to see you soon at one of our events. Thanks, Randall. Thank you, Brad. I'll see you in a few days. You bet.